What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. You're hanging with the dudes in blue on this Monday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. It's episode number 111. A lot of episodes. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me over there, as always... Antonino, what's up, everybody? Dude, what's going on? I see you're a little bit delayed for some reason with some silly kind of connection issue, but that's okay. I can still hear you. I can still see you. Everybody's coming in. Uh, say hi. Let us know that you're here in the broadcast. Share this with your friends, all of your NYCFC friends, fans, because we're about to get angry. So uh, at least I am. I don't know about you, dude. But um, down. That's right. Uh, right off the bat, we're saying hi to Jorge, Rob, Chris, Joey, Jason, Henry. What's going on, everybody? Thanks so much for joining us. We really do appreciate you spending your Monday evenings with us. I know you could be doing a lot of other things, uh, like, you know, lamenting over Mexico's demise <laughs> in the World Cup. But, oh, well, what are you going to do? We got Derby Week to talk about, according to Jorge over here. Andre San Ola. Dude, what's going on tonight? Not much, man. Just uh, one of those games just kind of sucks the life out of you. Like, just just as exhausted from the heat as we were from that day and just watching them play, it was like that exhaustion has followed <laughs> to this Monday. So, as you know, dude, we, we just finished uh, finishing our basement. It was completely unfinished. We just finished it. I got... Right. Got the, the couch delivered on Saturday, the day of the game. I got a 75-inch 4K TV, dude, and I was so excited to watch my first NYCFC away game on this beautiful television. <laughs> and then I said, I'm calling Best Buy to return everything because this is totally worthless. <laughs> I was just like, what did I do? They don't win on this TV. <laughs> no, I don't. they do not. They don't win on they this television. This, TV. this is a problem. This oh. is a problem. Well, look, guys. There's no, uh, there's no question as to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, NYCFC falls to Chicago Fire on. Uh, it was Saturday night, right? Yes, Saturday three, night. Three to two uh, in uh, away to Chicago. And um, listen, dude, this was just not a good game. I mean, they they had a spell of like ten good minutes where those two goals came. Other than that, it was. Yeah, I it for some reason whenever the what whenever they have like extremely warm weather, I feel like they are so lethargic when they play. It is unreal. Now I understand you're coming from a climate that's a little bit different, but like Chicago and New York really aren't that different. But it's the first really unseasonably warm, humid game. And I understand that, but you're an athlete. This is your job. You're meant to play in, in this snow rain. Chicago like didn't have a problem. Game. Exactly. So it, it's no excuse. You have to be ready to go. Um, ah, I I just don't. Uh, I there's no excuse for for the 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 sloth likeness of, of the way we started that game. I don't understand why we can't start games on the front foot. I, I really don't. I, I just it's beyond me. Yeah, I mean, dude. Yeah, we'll we'll get into the the goals obviously, but um, but line up. Pretty pretty much what we expected for the most part, right? No David Villa, yeah. Burgett playing up top. Uh, you had Medina and Tajuri uh, as wingers. Morales playing up top. Turen did say he was playing a double six, uh, which basically is two defensive midfielders in a four and ring. Which, like, why? I like that. I don't understand. I don't understand that. Maybe you guys in the comments can let us know what you think about that, but. Playing those guys that far back obviously it didn't do much good for us. Uh, I don't. I, I I understand that certain times it works and certain times it doesn't, and you have to deploy things at certain times to see you know what's what. But uh, you're playing against a team that's struggling of late and not really having the best, the, you know, the you know crazy good season like they had last year when they started. But you're playing against a formidable team and you have to be ready. So I, I just. It's not like I don't agree with what's with the lineup and the positioning, but it comes down to performance. Players, regardless of where you're told to play, you have to do your job. And when you do your job correctly, it, it's fine. But um, do you really need two defensive? I don't think you need two defensive. You can have two defensive-minded midfielders, which Dude, is fine. You played, you played with three in the back against Toronto, a team yeah. that we always have issues with. 
Yeah, I mean, this year they're not the same, obviously. But uh, I agree. I don't. I I don't see. Uh, we lack goals. Um, on the road. So I I don't know why you don't go out guns blazing and try to just bang as many as you can with as many people forward as possible. Well, listen, dude, uh, they were able they were able to put away two goals, which I, I'd have to check the schedule, but I don't remember the last time they were able to put away two away goals. The problem is that they gave up three starting in the first five six minutes of the match, where I don't know the center our center backs were just asleep and just Dax McCarty dude played a beautifully weighted ball to Nikolic. Which basically put him one on one with yeah. uh, with Sean Johnson and split our defenders and and that and that was that. Just again starting off the game on a, on the wrong foot and uh, and Chicago totally capitalizing on one pass, one freaking pass is all it took for them to to score on us. We we have possession for sixty five percent of the time. We can't put a freaking goal in. Again, this is where that possession doesn't matter unless you're doing something with it. Uh, you can hold the ball the entire time, but. If you give up one scoring opportunity and they bury it, you know you've you've lost. So you look, dude. Look at Spain, right? Look at Spain yeah. in the World Cup. You, you you complete five times as many passes as your opponent, and you still wind up losing the game, and you can't find the net. Possession is only that. It's just possession. It's what you do with it that counts. And Chicago, one hundred percent, dude, made us pay for that because every time they every time they were on the ball, it seemed like Chicago had a scoring chance and was was threatening. And credit to them for that, dude, because they took advantage of our a weak side or 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 a flat footed side right out of the gate. Yeah, I started off flat footed and let I me mean, let's be real. This defense, these four guys in the back, have done a pretty good job this season so far. Would you know Yeah, I listen, I would agree. I would I would agree that I'm 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 I feel way better about our defense than I've felt ever. Right. So I guess the issue comes into like now we're starting to see a little bit more of a mistake where it's not positioning. It's more of an attitude type thing or a, I don't, I don't, an effort type thing. We, we haven't seen this before in a long time. I and mean, we've seen it before, but it does. The, it's not like, almost not like a, it's a combination of a mental error and an effort error and a just an awareness thing like you you've got to have your head on a swivel at all times and a ball like that can't get through especially that early i mean you've got to be laser focused start of the game and i just don't think they they have that um and that being said it was a perfectly placed pass i mean uh, you got to give them some type of credit but the, i guess the biggest thing i'm taking away from this is that they didn't lose the way they've been losing all season they didn't get shut out. They didn't roll over and die. They couldn't like not find chances. Because they, they, they got scored on so damn early. Right. So you, you get you get that, but at the same time, I mean, you look. They had plenty of chances second half to 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 you know put shots on net. Unfortunately, that the finish wasn't there, or the you know the shots on goal. They couldn't put there. it on target. Right. But again, you still had chances. It wasn't like they were getting to the middle of the field and getting shut down. They were they were putting pressure on a lot and this is something we've seen the first time in a long time. They put a tremendous amount of pressure on the Chicago defense. I mean, when was the last time you saw us high press like that that hard? Yeah. So it's again, it's a loss, but it's nice to see that it's not like a rollover and die, a four nothing, you know, thudding or whatever you want to call it it's it was it was a game where honestly it mistakes ended up being capitalized on and that's pretty much what it was it wasn't so much of positioning was wrong or this and that this was really like one player was out of position or you know it wasn't like tactics again i mean there's are some tactics i would change we can get into that later but as far as a whole it wasn't a terrible game with the exception of those three goals <laughs> You know, dude, if those goals didn't go in, we'd probably win the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if my yeah. grandfather had three balls, he'd be a pinball machine. And a little, a uh, little John Madden there. You know, if we score more than the other team, uh, we're probably gonna win. <laughs> um, that was a horrible John Madden impression, by the way. I'm gonna slap myself in the face for that one. Anyway, uh, let's get to a couple of comments here, dude. And and they're sure. a little, they're a little sporadic here because uh, everybody wants to talk about uh, certain things here, but. Um, Jason says, I suspect our team suffers from a lack of focus uh, and low determination, and OMG, sweat looked bad. 
Um, I don't know, dude. I don't know if it was a focus thing. I think it was just an an effort thing. Like I'm not. Listen, I'm not blaming the weather. I'm not going to be that guy that blames the weather because Chicago had no problem. Specifically, Alexander Katai had no problem running up and down a field and running us ragged in that humidity. So I'm not going to blame the weather. I am gonna. I I am gonna blame our team in the fact that I don't think it was a lack of focus. I think it was just a lack of, um fortitude there was no bite there was no i don't think and i don't think that comes from a lack of focus yeah because they uh, still held the ball it's not like they turned the ball over all the time it was they held the ball like they normally do so to me it wasn't a focus thing yeah uh, i i agree i it's maybe focus comes into it you know here and there but um you have defensive lapses uh, with your sure. awareness yeah you get lapses but other than that i think it was more the level i think the energy wasn't where it should have been i I think this team thrives on momentum, and once they get the momentum, it's great. They keep rolling, but the minute they lose it, it kind of goes reverse, and they they kind of gets away from them. So uh, they they just start off incredibly slow for some reason, and I just I don't even the game against Houston where we scored first. After that, it was very slow, just slow moving. Everybody looks like they're they're you know they're they're. You got cement in their shoes, and everybody's like a step and a half slower than they usually are, mm-hmm. and that makes a big difference. Time I'll tell you what, everything. dude. I don't think I don't think that's a lack of David Villa because no. we we actually looked better in the second half last week against Toronto without David Villa than we did on Saturday all match without him. So I don't think him not being there was that big of an issue. Um, it's it's hard to it's hard to figure out what it was. Was it was it almost trying to focus too much on defense by playing those two defensive mids that we weren't able to get as forward as we wanted? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I it's hard. This one's a hard one for me to to pin. You you can't really pin things on any one particular player. Yeah, Ben Sweat had a pretty atrocious game, um, and you know was involved with uh, both of the of Katai's goals. Right, unfortunately. But really, it's hard to it's hard to finger point to one particular player or a couple of players. Yeah, no, I think it's more of a collective effort type thing. And yeah, you could point fingers at specific errors, but look at the play that got up to that point, and look at the lack of ability offensively um, for a good part of the game. Uh, I feel like we just we just couldn't get numbers forward. It was like yeah, it just wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. And and again, Sweat for as good as he is when he has his on games. When he has an off game, it's very off. It is – he just – between turning around the wrong way and then just not being able to wrestle the ball away or, or matching his uh, matching his, his man with speed and pace, I just uh, – I, I don't know what it was with him that game. But, um, uh, again, these are things that have to be addressed and, and ironed out because there are, there's little room for error at the top of the table. I'm sorry, uh, dude. Like, if, if Dome said he wants to play quicker – that was not it. This was not it. Like, this was 100% no. not, you know, I thought we were much faster against the Toronto FC side. Maybe, you know, some, somebody commented before. I got to try to find the, uh, I got to try to find the comment here. But um, somebody said, oh, it was John. John said, road woes continue. Maybe we can't play on a regulation size field. Maybe we can only play at Yankee Stadium. It's possible. You know, uh, dude, there's there, there's some shouting going on in the comments. I don't want to say shouting. But, shouting? Who's shouting? But singling out. There's some Keep singling out. Some singling out of, of some players here. What are um, you doing down there? <laughs> yeah. Joey says, with Bergen and Tajuri scoring, Medina is clearly the odd man out. Um, and then, again, uh, further down here, Jorge is saying bench Medina. Dude, I'm sorry. And, and to whoever you are that called me out in the Reddit post about saying that Medina was not DP quality he's not DP quality when you compare him to the other designated players on our squad I understand he's young and I understand he's got he's got to spend more time in this league but dude don't compare him to other DPs on our team compare him to other DPs his age or relative in the league he is not he's not stepping up to the standards he is just not doing it. He can't. He does not run at anybody. Dude, look at Ezekiel Barco. Like, actually, Henry just commented on this. Trade Medina for Barco. You can't. You're not gonna do that. Even, not gonna dude, do that. even even kids his age are uh, are are playing at a higher level than he is at at this moment in time. Um, Joey says Tajuri is more DP quality, and I know that's that's easy to say because he's the one 
scoring, right? He's creating the opportunities. He's scoring. But I'm sorry, dude. When you're when you're getting the start match after match, well, with the exception of the last two matches, when you're when you're being called upon to be that person, you gotta produce. And I'm sorry, dude. I'm just not seeing it. Somebody no, show no. me. Show me. Show me what he's I done. I understand. I understand he's young, which is fine. But a project can't. It really can't tie up a you space. You can't tie up that spot with the project, dude. And listen, you're not tying him up for one year. He doesn't not become a DP next year. His his uh his transfer fee is dragged out over the length of his contract. So you've got four. I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. These rules are so crazy. But if this is the way the rules are, you got four years of him as a DP. I don't need four years of this. I also don't need three years of this and then one year good year because you've wasted three years where you could have put somebody that actually runs at defenders and can take people on. Jack Harrison, dude. Harrison at 18 was better as a non-DP than Medina is at 19 as a DP. Yeah, I just honestly at this point, you really need to get Jonathan Lewis in there as a starter and and let him run rampant uh, because I think Medina has a problem on the right because of his left-footedness. I think he's a little bit too reliant on the left foot, and I think uh, a lot of times when he should whip the ball in, I don't think he's comfortable doing so. I think he would be much better if he could, but I don't think he trusts his right foot to whip it in the box. And if you put him on the left, then you kind of throw Tajuri off because Tajuri's a little bit stronger on that side. I mean, although on the right side, he could pretty much play anywhere. So Yeah, to see, I, see, I like Tajuri on the right. I think he's more dangerous on there, cutting in, which is exactly what Jack Harrison did, dude. When Jack Harrison got on that left foot... I, I'm sorry, dude. I think Tajori's got a better left foot than Harrison did at this point in time. Um, but that's that's the danger that you need. If 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 you've got a guy like Burgett that's you know maybe you know starting to score some goals here and there, you got to be able to produce from the wings. And dude, I'm not seeing it from Medina. You see it more from Shradi, and for the and for the life of me, dude, you see it more from Burgett at this point. Which that in and of itself is 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 crazy when you're comparing Medina to that. Now I understand Medina's not a, a center forward, but dude, you got to be producing here. You got to be providing quality crosses for your target man in the box, or you got to be cutting in, drawing defenders, and creating opportunities. And he's not doing any of those things. Yeah, if you're gonna sit there and complain about Burgett making what he makes, not taking up a DP slot, and complaining about production. You really need to be equally as complaining about Medina. I don't I take take youthfulness out of the equation. The soccer is the same everywhere. The net's the same size. You 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 play to get the ball in the net. You pass the ball to your teammates. It's the same thing. There's no excuse for him not be able to not be able to run out of defender, take him one on one, and beat player. I'm not saying beat him every time. I'm not saying you have to be the greatest dribbler in the world, but you have to create yourself a little bit of space and you have to be able to distribute. I don't think he can distribute on the right side. And on the left side, I mean, I, I just don't know. There's too much shuffling around going on. And I would like to see them kind of stay a little bit more if it's going to be Tajuri on the right. Um, but, uh, again, I just I, I need to see more. I need to see more. Uh, uh, he's got to be more aggressive. I need more aggression. I need more Almiron. I need more Barco out of him. And if those two guys can do it, then you should be able to do it. You should be able to run. I don't. I. I. I don't. I don't ever. Him running doesn't stand out to me. I can see Burgett running because he runs like a freaking giraffe. I. I and <laughs> Shradi, Shradi, for the life of me, has a bobblehead. His head swivels left and right a million times, but he, he. He. He has such vision where he knows where everything is, and he has his moves planned out two or three steps ahead. I, I don't think Medina's there yet, and I'm sorry, but you, you can't be taking up that much money and not know what you're doing. Uh, you're supposed to be a vital part, and you're you're really not. I mean, you had a couple of goals in the beginning, you had a couple of assists. That's great, but you also need to be able to do these things. You know, you're doing X and Y, but you really need to be doing Z as well. And I'm not seeing that yet. I think we're, it's going to be really interesting to see what uh, what Turin does on Sunday against Red Bull. This is going to be his this is going to be his real test. Although you know the. Uh, He's had some tests with, you know, via going out on injury against Toronto and then going to Chicago of all places. But the, uh, Red Bull is going to be a big, a big opportunity for him to really um, see who he puts his trust in. And, and maybe we do see Jonathan Lewis get the start uh, on Sunday. That's certainly something that we can discuss a little later on if we have time. But, um, uh, but yeah, dude, I think, you know, at this point, at this point, Yoinga Burgett has more goals than Jesus Medina, which, 
good for him. <laughs> could we, dude? Could we? We need to start the Viking clap at Yankee Stadium. I'm down. We have I not done. Why? I, I'm down. We gotta do it. I'll bring the helmet. I will bring the helmet. <laughs> you if should, you gotta bring. The, but I'll bring the helmet. You gotta bring the helmet, guys. Like, why? Why haven't we done this yet? That like, because <laughs> nobody liked them. Between all, liked, between, dude, all of a sudden, between, everybody's eating their eating Between crow. all the Scandinavians we have on our team, really should. What? Why are we not doing this? Atlanta <laughs> does it. Atlanta does it, but we don't. What you guys rowing in the outfield? Just. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, Joey says they need to score for the, the first goal this weekend. Yes. We, we're giving up way, way, way too early to just about everybody that plays uh, plays against us. It's really unfortunate. I, I think this weekend they have to come out and play Smash Mouth. Not band. They have to play Smash Mouth soccer. They have hey to. Hey, now. Yeah, no. You're an all star. Just like David V and Alex Ring. There you go. Um, Wait, was they, that Smash really, Mouth? That was Smash Mouth. It was, right? Okay. They they really need to come out and they need to like they have to play hard from the get go. Yeah. Uh, I'm losing you, man. Screws because it's not gonna fly if you give them a couple of ch- if if you give them a couple of chances it's just it's 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 not gonna be good. They uh, this is gonna be the biggest test. This is easily gonna be the biggest test uh, for Turen and for this squad. This is the game that you is going to show us whether you can handle it or you can't, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, this is going to be this is going to be tough. I mean, especially considering considering our um, our home form, dude. Like you know, we're still unbeaten at home all season. So yeah. you know, this is our place to defend, and against a team that beat us four nothing twice already this year, um, we we've we've got to put on a show. I mean, this is you know you got to you got to claim. Claim that land is yours, because Red Bull will come in there and absolutely destroy us with with the youth that they have right now, dude. They are a dude. I'm sorry, man. Red Bull's a freaking good team. They, oh yeah, they are a pretty solid team. Yeah, um, they, There's a lot, a lot of good things happening there, and at this point, it doesn't look like Jesse Marsh is going anywhere at this point in time. But um, but yeah, you got to be careful. Listen, they 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 jumped over us. Uh, this past weekend by defeating Toronto at BMO Field. Luis Robles made like 10 saves or something stupid like that. I think he stopped the Javinko penalty kick. But but that being said, but that being said, um, they're still a solid squad. And when you put them on a small pitch, look what this is what happens, you know? So, um, yes, it's going to be a massive test for him uh, on Sunday. Dude, we, we got to finish talking about the Chicago game before we move on to the yeah. next stuff here. Yeah, because, yeah no, let's stay there. Um, yeah, and Joey says Rebel has, Rebels have been playing amazingly lately. I have to admit, you can't argue. It's like you, it's, no, you know, it's hard to argue. Just look at, just look at facts. it. Look at the standings. It's facts, man. It's facts. Um, while we finish up talking about the, uh, Chicago Fire match, guys, I want to know, uh, who to do to the match was because we have to give it, even though we sucked. Uh, we have to give a due to the match. And, uh, dude, you and I talked before the show started and are, you and I are in pretty much agreement, right? On who we think should get it? Yeah, absolutely. Alexander Katai, Chicago Fire, on absolutely spinning Ben Sweat out of his shoes, getting both uh, him and Collins to bite. Just, um, he had a phenomenal game, man. Cutting back to that left foot. The, his first goal was beautiful. His second goal to beat two defenders was even better. He, he won that, he won that game for Chicago. <laughs> he, he did. Um, Message to Sean Johnson: Stop wearing that freaking jersey. What did he All wear? Right? Stop wearing the green sleeves with the oh, white. Oh yes, yes, yes. All right, because that jersey's got a lot of goals against in it. So maybe burn that one. Maybe. Maybe just burn it. Maybe just never wear it again. Stick to the orange. The orange is good. The orange is for you. You're good with the orange. Um, it, it's just we should keep track of how many goals are scored when with what jersey <laughs> being worn. We can like weed them out. Um. I, listen, there there are a couple of good things that I'm seeing uh, as far as tactics go with Turin. I do like the high pressure. Um, I like the, the ability to create turnovers in the final third of the pitch where you can create some really dangerous chances. It comes to finishing at this point. Uh, you saw Maxi kick a bunch. Uh, I had two or three chances where he kicked it over the goal. Uh, Ring had a chance where he booted it. Um, so those have to be addressed. Those 
low line drives, guys. Low line drives. <laughs> they 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 do good. They do really good. Trust me. Um, but uh, again, I I I want to kind of touch on Sean Johnson a little bit. Um, not so much him specifically, but what he's going to have to do. Uh, Are you talking due to the match? No, 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 no. I'm I'm just talking due to the match. We I'm I'm already wrapped up with. Katai. Guys, was, I, I got uh, I got one person voting here with in the comments here. I got Steven voting for Katai. Who's who else is due to the match? Because otherwise, we're just going to say that it's Alexander Katai. Everybody's just like. <laughs> Jorge did say the sun. The sun. The but, sun was. It was rough. It was rough. It was hot. It was hot today too. Like, it was very hot. It was very hot. Um, uh, yeah, all right. You guys aren't commenting, so Alexander Katai, you get the due to the match for uh, episode one eleven. Lauren, if you're here, go ahead and update that Google Doc and give it to a player that's not on NYCFC. <laughs> Just give it to anybody that. over there. Just don't give it to Dax McCarty that. because even though he had a great game, I still don't like him. <laughs> he looks like – all right. Really quick in the comments, does anybody watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Please let me know because if you do, the man looks like Rickety Cricket. <sighs> If you guys know what I'm talking about, please show me some love on social media that you agree with me. Maybe I'll post a graphic. Maybe I'll post a graphic because yeah. with that beard that, 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 that like that straggly beard that he that he had on and that hair that was long and like sweaty, he looked like Rickety Cricket. <laughs> so, guys, Google Rickety Cricket right now if you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, and you're gonna <laughs> laugh your butts off. Anyway. Sorry, go ahead, dude. Your point about Sean Johnson, Alexander Katai so, gets due to the match, so there you go. Uh, if, Move on. if anybody, not to go off subject here, but if anybody watched today's Belgium game, the the final goal in stoppage time started with a uh, corner kick being stopped in the box, and Courtois ends up uh, getting up rather quickly, rolling the ball out, and the play started from there. If you've seen that play, I want you to tell me how many times you've seen Sean Johnson get up and want to do exactly what he did and stop himself from doing so because of what's being taught, what's tactically being in place? But, dude, we've never been a counterattacking team. It's not – it's – it's you don't have to be a counterattacking team, but you've got to be able to utilize this at least two or three times a game when you have so many numbers forward and you're able to actually, you know – do this, which you should be able to. Um, you've got to have this in your repertoire. This play is so solid where Sean can easily get the ball, throw it up to Ben Sweat or Tinnerholm that's heading up the wings, and a counterattack, it's, it, it, they do work. We have the legs <laughs> to do so. We have the legs to do so. And we've seen it happen once. In, I'm not saying invite pressure constantly and then do this. I'm saying that at least two or three times a game, to not be so predictable, you've got to be able to do this. This has to be one of the tools in your repertoire in order to be successful. We've talked I about it a lot, if, dude. You got to have a different look, right? Like, and that's and that's certainly something tricks. that can be surprised. Uh, that can certainly surprise a team. I think, and I think, dude, I think we now you see a little bit more now. You see him booting the ball a little bit more. But dude, uh -huh. when you, but when you look at our midfield and our forwards, we're we're not necessarily maybe maybe with the exception of Tajuri and Bergett at times we we're not a pacey squad. It, you don't have to be. It's not about so much pacey, but if you're getting good field position on your man, I, and I you take agree. Off before he does, you're going to be able to beat him down the field. Agreed. But how many times are our players just outran? Well, th th that comes down to effort. That I you mean, know? listen. Callens, Callens can run with the best of them. Callens can cover a horse. I'm positive about that. Um, whether he smacks him in the face afterwards is a different story. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's not that they don't have the pace. It's that you have to be able to know and have the awareness of when to deploy certain tactics and certain plays and things like that. Um, that's really make or break. Uh, there, there's, there's a Listen, you might kill two or three counter attacking chances just by holding on to the ball 
and listen, if you get everybody moving together, you can actually create two or three chances where you're odd man rushing, and all of a sudden you've got three guys against two, and one guy ends up being wide open because the last defender can't pay attention to him because the ball's in front of him. It, it's it, Plays like that last goal today with the Belgium game, those happen far more often than, than you think. There's a really good play. It's a really good counter. You don't have to play that way the entire game, but I'm all I'm saying is is that if you can do that, a couple times you are super dangerous because you're not limiting yourself to just the same game plan every single time uh i would like to see a little bit more of it and we did we saw a little bit against toronto where he threw the ball out a couple times that's great but if you if you know you're going to get the the advantage you've got to be able to capitalize on that yeah well i listen i'm i agree in the sense that we need to be able to to counter i mean i think every every good uh, every good soccer team should have some element of a counterattack in their game at some point, even if you use it a couple times a match to surprise the the opposition, right? But um, and and again, I think uh, I think under Terence tutelage, I'm going to use the word tutelage. Tutelage. We might we might start to see that, right? So like we still got to remember this is only his second match, really like his first full week. With the squad, when you really think about it, right, dude? Because he came here last yep. Saturday. They played Sunday and then Saturday. He only, he's had a full week now with the squad. And he right. said he's going to take him he's, over the next couple of weeks. He's going to start to integrate more and more things. So, unfortunately, I think that that I, – I think we're, we haven't necessarily seen the worst of NYCFC. And that's just my kind of feeling and prediction based on um, – just kind of based on the way things went in Chicago – him trying to implement some things that he wanted to implement. And uh, I just hope that, you know, it's for the better. But I, th- I think we're going to see some growing pains here is my point. Joey's yeah. asking, do we see Chano this weekend? Not sure exactly why he still isn't playing. That's a really great question. I think he's he's on the bench. He's clearly fit. Um, but I think something is just happening with Ibiaga and Collins. I guess they're building the relationship or maybe, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's – <clears throat> it's riding the hot hand at, at this time. But you're talking about Chino and a guy that was one of the uh, premier center backs in this league. I mean, he was lights out for majority of last year mm-hmm. and the beginning of this year sure. with the exception of that Red Bull game. Um, and it seems from that point on, he's kind of been shell shocked a little bit and the personal matter with, with whatever that uh, happened to be. Um, and he's just not been able to find his way back in. And again, it, when you're a center back as a sub, it's a little bit different because you don't always park the bus. You 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 you're more often than not substituting on like for like or trying to get some more attacking involved. So you're you're not really switching a center back for a center back unless somebody gets injured. You know what I mean? You might be switching a center back for a midfielder, but right. you don't always you don't always do that. You Maybe you put in a more defensive-minded midfielder to keep positioning the way it should be, um, but otherwise you're almost you're always taking off a defender and putting in a forward or a winger or, or some sort of attacking player. So I don't know why he's not playing, and I do feel bad because I mean the guy's he's proven yeah. that he's fantastic. But again, it's like at this point, do you really want to mess up the chemistry that you have going with these two guys who play fairly well together? I mean they they've been doing pretty solid jobs so far. Yeah, it's again. I I think I don't think you're gonna see much. I don't think you're gonna see a big lineup change uh, going into Sunday's match against Red Bull. Uh, I think maybe the only switch that you might see, and this is a complete. There's two really, two complete long shots. One that David Villa is back to to health, which I don't believe so especially since he's eating mcdonald's all of a sudden that that's the beginning of the end for me um <laughs> next thing you know he's 35 pounds overweight and it's like oh my god what happened got a good sponsorship deal i don't know uh so so either either v is going to be back and even if he is back he's not going to start he's going to he's going to be a bench guy and he might come in late uh if 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 he's up to it and the other thing that is another long shot is that you're going to see Jonathan Lewis over uh, Jesus Medina. So, um, and even again, that I believe is also a long shot. I don't think that he's going to be deviating too much from what we saw uh, against Chicago. Maybe pushing up a little bit higher and maybe going back 
to uh, playing Ring as that quote unquote third center back and pushing uh, Tinner Holman Sweat up forward a little bit more and having Maxi play play forward more. I think that's maybe the only change that you see against Red Bull. The way the way they're deploying Burgett and the the the, the top two wingers, your, your forwards, um, it's it's really great for the diagonal switching the the pass from Ben Sweat either Tinner Holm that's going up the wing or from Ben Sweat going to Shroddy or whoever's playing the the right forward position the right wing position somewhere in that area getting the ball from the left side of the field to that side and vice versa um that's that that's really where the guys in the middle can pick their spots, get in good position based on the defense moving around, and then the service really coming into the box. I mean, you could see – now you've seen what Berger can do. And I'm not sold 100% yet, but the guy's been playing like this all year. It's just that the goals haven't been there. Now the goals are starting to trickle in, and, I mean, he's pretty – listen, he could have tied the game up um, with that header off the crossbar, mm-hmm. just, just missing it. And he's – he's it's, it's funny with him because – he is very solid in the air, but only in the box. I feel like he does not win any ball that's in the middle of the field. I feel like he missed times, misjudges, or everybody else is just using him as a stepladder to get up there. But for me, you see what he does as a, as a sole striker. Now you kind of got to figure out when David Villa comes back, what do you do? If he's on a hot streak, do you, do you take him out? And do you use him as a straight swap for Villa um, when need be? I wouldn't do that simply for the fact that Medina's not really playing up to par. I would say maybe push David Villa out on the left and keep Shradi on the right and keep Burgett as your, your main guy in the middle and allow them to rotate when they have to, but try to keep it that way because Villa's no stranger to the left. And, I mean, his service is as good as anybody's. I mean, he's, both feet are fantastic. And then Shradi does what Shradi does. I mean, for me, he's been a savior this season. He's been fantastic. And as long as you can kind of keep that uh, that together, that might be a look that you see going forward. But, um, uh, again, I, I'm curious to see what the tactics are, what the little changes are over the next two or three weeks. And, honestly, it's a tough one because if, if Atlanta keeps winning and Red Bull keeps winning and our tactics aren't there and we're, we're, you know, we're just letting points slip away – it's going to be trouble. It's going to be a lot of trouble. And this is where losing a coach in the middle of the season kind of throws you off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, again, it, I'm not so hell-bent on getting first place. It would be fantastic. As long as we can finish where we're not playing that playing game, I'm cool with that because I think what's going to happen here is that we're going to hit a little bit of a rough patch. We're going to you know, have trouble growing pains like we've discussed so far. But then I think we're going to come into our own, and coming into your own at the end of the season, uh, it just bodes well tremendously. I mean, if, if you're riding, if you're riding a winning streak going into the playoffs, doesn't matter where you go in, you're gonna you're gonna do well. You're gonna get there. You're gonna keep riding that momentum, that force, as long as you don't get too cocky, <laughs> um, and it's not 95 percent humidity out. Obviously, <laughs> true. So uh, for me, it's it, the next coming weeks are going to be very telling as to what the coach is doing, if the players can do what's asked of them. And honestly, the window, I think the, the transfer window opens up, uh, I think the 10th. Um, I don't know. Where's Roddy? Roddy! <laughs> yeah, um, see, he's not in here today. He's not. So the window, the window opens up soon. So I would look for moves to be made because the midfield needs a lot of retooling. Uh, we need a lot of more depth there with the injuries to Herrera and – uh, it's. I just want to see more attacking. I want to see more aggression. I, I just watching Medina go down the field and get beat and and not be able to take on a guy and and, and try to make space. I just I. Ugh, I'm tired. It's depressing. I'm tired. It's depressing. It, it is. is. It is. When, when you see what guys like Shradi and Burgett are doing off the ball, and then with the ball, I mean Sh- Shradi just was burning people left and right and even when he couldn't he actually found himself in no space to get a shot and it goes in now listen they go in sometimes that's right you, you don't know until you try but you gotta get it on the woodwork and that was a problem for us second half and you gotta just be confident and you gotta go in there and i think that's a big the confidence is going to be a big part of what dominic turan 
brings to this team. I think he's going to instill confidence that the more things they do well, uh, they're, they're all piece it together, and all of a sudden we're going to have uh, a fine-tuned machine. It just comes down to how long is it going to take to get to that point, Time. and, yeah. and will we be able to withstand dropping points and tying games uh, until then? Because I don't think they'll be able to win every single match, you know, while they're learning. Yeah, that was definitely uh, that was definitely Patrick Vieira version one point five on uh, on Saturday night. That's that's for just damn the sure. second half. What when you know you're down a goal and the, the I tweeted it out, dude. I was like, passing. do they know they're down a goal? Because yeah, and and I don't know how much of that's the coach and how much of that's the players, but um, I mean, you'll get teams that'll just collapse and they'll they'll invite pressure, and you gotta be able to do something with that, but. Uh, it's, 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 it's so difficult. There's so many things that are going on during a game where it's, it's hard to pinpoint specific little things that could be changed and just, you know, flick a switch and all of a sudden it's, everything's going well. It's, it's, it's a lot of things that are going on that need to be addressed. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah, let's just hope it's not, you know, it's not a, let's hope it's not too long of a rough patch for, uh, for our boys in blue as they do take on. The uh, the Red Bulls on Sunday night. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, it's definitely going to be a tough one. We shall um, we shall see. It all remains to be seen. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, but um, cautiously. Yeah, I, I'm. Listen again. I'll say anything that looks like effort and uh, result at this point for this game. I, I'm not saying I don't care. Of course, I want a w- I want a win. I want three points. But as long as this team shows up, fights, and and tr- gives gives the hundred and ten percent and leaves it on the field like they did against Chicago last year, um, that's the type of performance that you need. You need the leaders on this team to to step up and and carry the load and and get everybody on the same page and just fight. Uh, another three nothing game or four nothing game or a game where you're just not into it uh, and you fall apart is just unacceptable and it, it can't happen. Yeah, no, it can't. Uh, Joey says, let's survive the first 10 minutes without conceding a goal, please. That's let's take this game 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, you just can't, I don't think you can sit back and, and invite pressure. I, I think you have to get the ball first and I think you have to go as hard as you possibly can. at him. Um, not to a point where you're throwing everybody forward, but uh, keep the high line and and press them as much as you want to press you. The whole game, man, you don't want to be no. playing uphill the entire match. You don't want to be no. playing for 85, 84, 80 minutes. It's just you can't do it, man. No. It's like impossible. No, no. But it's good, interesting to see how if you're if we're gonna play the same pressure that we put on Chicago, I'm curious to see how it's gonna fare against the Red ball Bull. is not gonna leave the midfield. <laughs> Um, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to see a freaking stalemate of just like – They might as well just play tennis over the, mid, the midfield line. That's the, it. The that's exactly line. right. Just, just You'll see a lot more long balls over the top. You know, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Well, the we really do. Have... 30 love. That's right. <laughs> we do appreciate you guys hanging with us for episode 111. Uh, it's been a lot of fun here. Uh, let us know in the comments if you like the episode, or actually even better, leave us a review on Facebook or on um, – what else do I tell people to leave us a review? On iTunes. That's right, iTunes. iTunes. I'm sorry. I'm exhausted right now. Uh, Facebook or iTunes if you guys like the podcasting, if you guys like the show, let us know your feedback. We really do appreciate it. Um, we will definitely be back here Monday night. Oh, that's going to be – that's going to be – dude, either way, that's going to be a good episode. Oh, yeah. Monday night after yeah. the Derby, that's going to be a good episode. And yeah. then we're going to do one on Thursday night? Thursday night, yeah. We'll have – we'll be After recapping. the Montreal Impact match. And then back again on Monday night after the – I don't know who the hell we play, dude. I have not looked that far. Columbus. That far. Thank you. After the Columbus match. So um, really, uh, if, if you guys are at the game on Sunday, feel free to stop by and say hello. I know last time uh, we had a couple guys. Joey – Thank you so much for um, stopping by last match. It was really nice to see you and meet you. Um, 
but yeah, dude, really, other than that, you know, give us the follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Dudes in Blue. It's really easy to get a hold of us. Uh, dudesinblue.com, as always. Give some love to Anthony Merced for all the work he's doing on the blog because he's keeping us updated with match recaps, previews, pieces. He's fantastic. Make sure to give him the follow as well. Yep. And um, But we will definitely be here on uh, Monday night, 8 p.m. Uh, but that's really it, dude. Until next time. Stay blue. Blue. <laughs>